This is Eyewitness News with Diane Burns, Dick Johnson for Mike Jackson, Brad Palmer on sports, Jerry Taft's weather, and the Eyewitness News team. This is Eyewitness News. Good evening. One teenager is dead, another is fighting for his life tonight. After police say the two trespassed onto a Commonwealth Edison site and tried to climb a circuit breaker. Keith Brummery has the story. Police speculate the incident began as a teenage adventure, but when it was over, 18-year-old Douglas Greenberg was dead. His friend, 18-year-old Michael Delaney, critically injured. Police say the young men apparently climbed this 10-foot tall fence topped with barbed wire sometime after midnight this morning and then shimmied up the side of this large circuit breaker. A resultant short circuit sent 138,000 volts of electricity through the teenager's body. Created a massive ball of fire and flame, which uh, engulfed them, knocked them off of the uh, uh, circuit breaker to the ground, and of course tripped out our uh, service as far as 138,000 volts was concerned to this particular uh, transformer. The young men were rushed here to Lutheran General Hospital. Doctors say their injuries were among the worst imaginable. The total extent of the burn is almost, I would say, 90% plus in both of them. From head to toe? Head to toe. Head to toe all the way. Uh, almost every single surface of the body is burned. This large 25-acre Commonwealth Edison substation is well posted with signs warning of the danger posed by the high voltage electricity. However, there is clear evidence that these warnings are not being taken seriously by everyone. We're baffled by why they would want to uh, make entry to that uh, uh, area clearly a dangerous area. Niles police say their investigation into exactly what the two teenagers were doing here early this morning will continue. But at this point, they say it appears to be a teenage prank that just ended all so tragically. From Niles, Keith Burmery, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Tonight, Michael Delaney is in critical condition at the University of Chicago's burn unit. Dick? Diane, tonight an investigation by Chicago police and the Chicago Park District has concluded that the death of a West Side man who apparently drowned last night in a Park District pool was accidental. The body of 31-year-old Alfonso Thomas was discovered by lifeguards in the pool at Union Park around 8 o'clock last night. Lifeguards tried to revive the victim, but they were unsuccessful. He was later pronounced dead at Cook County Hospital. It was the first such incident at a Chicago Park District pool this year. Well, the final course was served at Taste of Chicago this evening, and when it was over, the city had reached a goal of staging the biggest taste ever. This year's taste saw record sales and record crowds, and this weekend, a record effort to make this the safest taste ever. Here's Tim Ryan. As thousands of people headed home from the Taste of Chicago on public transportation tonight, they had some welcome company. Last weekend, the CTA suffered $25,000 to $30,000 damage at the hand of vandals. The CTA blamed it on drunks leaving the taste and asked the city to crack down on beer sales. The city balked at the idea of limiting beer sales at Taste of Chicago, but it did something else to cut down on crime and vandalism. 100 police officers were assigned to ride the rails this weekend. There were virtually no problems. Our main concern is the safety of uh, the passengers uh, riding the CTA, and uh, we've uh, received uh, quite a bit of uh, compliments from the riding uh, public. The fact that they were, the, that officers were in uniform out there riding trains, I think, is the most effective deterrent to any kind of this, any kind of uh, crime like that. A record 2.8 million people tasted Chicago over the last 10 days. They left behind nearly 600 tons of garbage, and somebody had to pick it up. Hey, I don't want to see no more garbage. Let's <laughs> be real. The taste rang up $9.5 million in sales, and unlike just about anything else the city does, it may actually turn a small profit. Tim Ryan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Well, Tim tells us the city anticipates that figure to exceed last year's profit of $350,000. Terry Gaynor fired off another volley today at Cook County State's Attorney Richard Daly. The Republican candidate today accused the incumbent Daly of being negligent in his job, of actually allowing dangerous crooks to cruise the streets. Second step is after they... Hardened criminals are plea bargained into work release programs when they properly belong in prison or jail. And when they repeatedly fail to show up for their work release assignments, Daly consistently fails to obtain warrants for their rearrest. Gaynor accused Daly of letting murderers and sex criminals walk free. He's calling for a special grand jury to seek the arrest of those criminals who he says Daly let go.
Channel 7 has asked for comment from Mr. Daly, but his office says there will be no comment. When we come back, the Teamsters look ahead after last night's death of Union President Jackie Presser. And voters in Mexico take to the streets after officials refuse to release results from last week's presidential election. Those stories and much more as Eyewitness News continues. You know, there are a lot of reasons why your car might leak. Is your transmission shot? Maybe, maybe not. Now's the time to take your car to Amco. They'll give your transmission the most complete diagnostic checkup in the industry. So if it's just a small problem, they'll spot it. Fact is, half the cars serviced by Amco dealers don't need a new transmission. So chances are that little leak won't end up draining your wallet. Amco, AA, MCO. Midway Airlines presents the incredible shrinking fares. Thrills! Special savings to New York, Boston, and Washington, D.C. Romance! Fares you'll positively love to Florida, New Orleans, and Las Vegas. Adventure! Exciting low fares to Omaha, Atlanta, and Pittsburgh. Phone Midway Airlines now and ask for... The Incredible Shrinking Fares. Here are two good reasons to see your Toyota dealer. One, a big selection of Celica coupes and liftbacks. Great performance, value, and deals that could save you a great deal. Two, a big extra value option package that could save you over a thousand more. There are nine Celica models with options like air, cassette upgrade, cruise control, and more. Save up to $1,035 before you even make your deal. But hurry on in. These Celica deals plus big option savings won't last long. See your Toyota dealer today. Big is back! Big sun, big sail, big splash, big wave, big hat, big dream, big kiss, big wing, big bee, big fly, big bite, big guy. Good time, great taste, Super Size makes it my place. Super Sizes are back. Larger than large Coca-Cola, Super Size shakes and fries. For limited time, they're as quick as a drive through Big fry, real stick, big cold, real quick. But good time, great taste, of McDonald's, big fun. <laughs> In Mexico, federal election officials again delayed releasing the results of last week's presidential elections amid growing protests and opposition charges of vote fraud by the government. For the second straight day, opposition parties continue to hold demonstrations in the capital, charging that the ruling Institutional Revolutionary Party is perpetuating massive vote fraud to elect its candidate, Carlos Salinas de Gotari. Meanwhile, the leftist opposition leader has claimed victory and has pledged to step up demonstrations. The Electoral Commission says the delays in announcing the results are due to technicalities and problems from polling stations. The White House says it may decide as early tomorrow whether to compensate families of the 290 people killed in last week's downing of an Iranian plane. President Reagan is reportedly expected to decide that compensating the families of those killed aboard Flight 655 is the right thing to do. And Iran has requested a United Nations Security Council meeting, which is scheduled for Tuesday, amid hopes it will condemn the United States for the incident. Today, official Tehran Radio said the commemorative services were held today in Tehran and other cities for the families of those victims. Diane? Vic, the executive board of the Teamsters Union is looking for a successor to Jackie Presser. Presser died Saturday night of cardiac arrest. Presser led the union for five years, and he was a strong leader. Convinced the membership to support President Reagan in 1980, the only union to do so. But his ties with the White House didn't help him when he was indicted two years ago for embezzlement and racketeering. The government has been out to get me at any cost, throwing due process of law out the window. Federal officials say Presser was tied to the mob and two weeks ago was named as a defendant in a government suit to rid the Teamsters of mob control. The government says efforts to clean up the union will continue. Services for Presser are...